Good morning, everybody. Jenna Jekyll Bates, and we have made it through the middle of the week. We are racing towards the weekend. It's like a sauna outside. It's hot, it's humid, muggy. It's been raining every day like we're in Florida, but we're not. We're in the Mississippi Delta, which can be just as grueling sometimes during the summer. But we've got a few baits to show you guys today, and then I want to talk about this guy. But first, I'm going to talk about these little guys right here because they're getting ready to go out the door. And then we'll talk about the rest of this. So these will probably disappear. I'm going to do this in a couple of different takes today. Um, and I really want to spend some time talking about this little guy. Because that little guy is really cool. I've got a couple of duo pressings uh, that came from Brian at Dinger. And then I have some Lucky Craft replicas that are a slow rise float. We've got a stick on the dot suspend, one to three feet slow rise float. Got these again. These are very popular. Everybody likes them. I like that you guys love them, so I'm going to keep on making them. Then we've got some little 1.5s. What is interesting about this is how this pearlescence affects the look of the paint on the back of this bait. Now this is just like a, a little herring, little um, hickory shad type deal on a 1.5. Got some silver, got some bone, very effective. Smaller presentations a lot of times in the summer are money. Um, when you can't get the big guys to choke down a 2.5 or anything bigger, that's always a good option, especially if you've got finicky bass on a pressured water system. These are also good as well. Um, Y'all know I'm a big fan of these. These and their big brothers, the 120s. I've always loved Duo to begin with. So these guys, again, money. And look at that pearlescence. So just one more time going down the line on these. And then these are headed, racing towards one of my tournament anglers. Go knock their lights out. Have fun. We'll talk about these in just a second. Be right back. Next up, talk about this guy. You guys might have been seeing a little bit of a buzz on this thing. You might be considering purchasing the blank itself. This is the all new Dinger 1.5 Atlas. It is a circuit board lip or a CB bill or circuit board's fine if abbreviations frighten you, but it's pretty cool. I have it upside down for a reason. I wouldn't even call this a downside, but the only thing extra that you have to do is that you have to fasten this bill into place. It does not come together and put together. And the reason that it doesn't is because he wants to make sure that there's nothing wrong with tuning coming from the factory, which is a good idea because I've seen like, especially on some of the wake baits that have come out and some of the other circuit board lip stuff that's circulating and floating around out there, it comes in crooked and it's already super glued. So it's almost impossible to make sure it's in place right. So he's leaving that up to the bait um, sprayer, the artist to do that. And I think that that's a fantastic idea. So I certainly do not mind doing that. The reason that I had it on its back like that is because once you put the circuit board in and you lay it on its side, gravity. And if you hung it upside down, gravity could pull that out a little bit. So the best way that I've found to do it is, and I can line them up side by side and put them between like something like a bookend or whatever, if I'm doing a run of these. Um, I've done it on the flat sides before because he does the same thing with his flat sides. But you want to make sure that that, that lip is in proper or else your tuning is going to be screwed up. So kudos to him for having the foresight not to have these things put in when they get to the states. So the other thing that he did is they're having um, the manufacturer is doing a pre-clear coat on these which should help with um, paint adhesion uh, he's got a quick tutorial on how to put the circuit board lip in 
on his uh, website and also on his um, Facebook and YouTube and I'll put those links down there it's pretty simple um, because there's some a little bit of clear coat on this before you guys get them the only thing that you're probably gonna have to do is take a little exacto knife and just re make sure uh, make sure that your holes are are nice and clean to slide this in and then whatever super glue you have happen to have lay it up like that and it only takes 10 minutes or so but mine have been going overnight he was kind enough to give me a couple of these silence to, to sample you'll notice that the um the gill plate is pretty cool it's different than a lot of other gill plates although it is similar to the gill plate that you see not on his s crank pressing but on the other one that's circulating around it's that same sort of design but just in a couple of different pieces. So this is a very cool design that he's got. I'd love to get my hands. I'll probably be purchasing some of the rattling ones, even though I do a lot of clear water stuff, which is one of the reasons that I was excited to get this silent one. The eyes are not 100% round, but they take a six millimeter. And it looks like, let's go ahead and I have a scale here. I'll back the camera out a little bit. They should be right around three eighths of an, uh, an ounce and these scales are great uh, this one you can do a number of different you can do grams or ounces or I use it for uh, measuring paints when I'm doing fluid acrylics I also do it for packages up to a, a pound this thing will do but if we're looking at that right around 0.37 which is roughly 3 8 so if you guys are doing fractions and most of the rods in America in the states have the fractional you know a quarter to an ounce or whatever your rod weight for your lures is so it's um that's it's three yep three seven one so that's roughly three eighths undressed and when they're dressed just under a half now this has got it's probably a little bit less if you don't have the tail um I did this up and I've already tested this and I, I know I know how well it runs but he also has another video uh, some really good underwater footage of this thing swimming as well so I know I talk a lot about uh, Brian but he just kind of goes the extra mile for his customers and I really like that about him um, this is what these things look like dressed And it's just, it's a sharp looking, yeah, I pulled it off of my, my favorite rod, my six, six stick. Say that five times fat, fast. So there you go. Awesome, innovative, love the circuit board design, still tough. Um, I have not seen any footage of this, nor have I tried it, because I, I did some river fishing and it wasn't a real hard bottom it was kind of pebble small gravel but i haven't seen this tested against like real heavy duty rocks so I, maybe i'll take it out to bull shoals and uh, do some tests around there with this love the way it swims it's a fish catcher love the the action i think i'm also going to test it with an oval ring see what the difference is there but highly recommended and i've spent uh, a considerable amount of time talking about it but go go check these out it's the atlas 1.5 comes in rattling and silent at dingerbaits.com i will leave those links in the description below if you guys are interested but this little thing it's going to be a contender um quite the beast in the water good deal there on to this stuff last four baits I'm going to show you today are these little dinger S's the party cranks and I pre I, I did some foiling on both of the goldfish uh, more prominently and I, I did random foiling so the entire thing is not covered in foil the sides definitely are and up over the back but you kind of lose the foil in the paint scheme and I'm gonna flash a picture of what my client requested and I just I had a whole bunch of fun spraying these for him but I love the foil underneath it very much gives off the resemblance of those goldfish 
and uh, just just an all-around fun 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 bait to spray so this is the one that he requested and then the calico is the other and you can see that foil coming through the top I used all transparent paints and I also did a little bit, now I did foiling on the bottom of this one as well. Um, but you can just see a lot of pop in these baits. And I'm excited to see what you're going to be catching with these. I can't wait. So, the one thing about the orange in lighting, whether it's LED or natural, really has a tendency to like blow out the the camera for whatever reason so like when you get under here it's you can see on the belly that's whoo it's really bright it's like a second sun so there's those and then we did two of these tiger perch slash crappie type patterns in the green like a deep moss green silver fading down to a black and then stark white on the belly a lot of pearl I did a lot of pearl paints on this so you can really see that that glitter and that my friends is all the news that's fit to print we are screaming towards the weekend I hope you guys have a very cool very non rain filled weekend I hope that you guys are able to get out and enjoy beautiful mother nature have a fantastic rest of your week and i will see y'all on the water if i can ever get there hopefully i will if it ever cools off and stops raining i might just sneak out Good morning, everybody. You guys are probably going to watch this Wednesday or Thursday, but I had so many pieces, I kind of wanted to break this up into two separate groups of updates. So, uh, you know, it's really nice to wake up to the Grateful Dead sometimes. Just, it's refreshing. But we're going to... There we go. Got some poppers, got some wake baits, got some wiggle warts. So we've got some great summer collections going on on this one. And this is more the, the top water selection, except for these guys. But these guys are pretty cool, too. Um, these are those Dinger new pressings that he's got out. That's the pre wrap style. I like those very much. This is, you guys have seen this pattern before, but this is the For the Throne. And these are in the process of getting dressed. Um, I think the last part of the video that I shot... I had not dressed or cleaned. Everything's cleaned. Everything is dressed and everything. So again, this is coming in late, but uh, right there, folks. Going out or gone out by the time you guys see this one. Lots of rivets. Love the eyes on this one. Very cool. Poison Arrow Frog. Been doing a lot of these lately. They must be working really well. Um, cool pattern. I like the way the blue plays off the black in this as well. And then you have that shading that kind of blends in the middle of the bait. And very cool red eyes. The Yellow Frog, which kind of looks chartreuse, but it is yellow. It's a fluorescent yellow spray blue eyes and the Grim Reaper also a fun pattern these are deadly in the summer y'all these little gill throughs gold mines catch for you and the American Bullfrog with Jetson eyes Got that pumpkin. There's your pumpkin seed. Spring gill. 
Yes, I am moving through these quick because you guys spent a lot of time with me on the other video. So I'm going to kind of give you guys a break if I can. Plus, I need to hustle up and get this finished so that by the time you guys see this tomorrow, this thing's already going to be... I love this pattern. I always love the hot tuna. It's just a blend of colors. I think I have done a spray session on this before. I can't rightly recall. And again, jets and eyes. Really like the, the hot tuna. Spring crappie. Works three seasons. Actually, this will this will pretty much catch them all year long. Definitely three seasons. Spring, blockbuster in the summer, and fall. And we got some wiggle warts. And a harvest craw. Transparency going on here. See through. Harvest crawl. If you guys have any questions at all, at all, leave me a comment, drop me a line in the section below. Static line. Static line is cool too. That's just that metallic mesh. Lots of fun with these. And these are all, this is a fluorescent, fluorescent red, fluorescent yellow, fluorescent green, and a spray over in black. Added some cool fluorescent eyes. And again, the hot tuna. If y'all have smallmouth in your area and you're not throwing this pattern, I think I've probably caught more smallmouth on this pattern, unless I'm throwing, unless it's a really crazy bite and I have to do a match the hatch. But they love bright things. It's pretty wild. But that's the rest of what we got. There's more over on the drying rack that's going to be going in a separate shipment. Yada, yada, yada. You guys have heard that all before. But this is just the late addition to the earlier Monday update, which you guys will probably see Wednesday. It's confusing, I know. I know. I'm confused. I don't even know. I'm going back to work. All right. Love you guys. Mean it. Cheers. Happy casting.